Today on the show, playing with power, the image of esports, and the sweet lamentations of your enemies, all on Player vs. Player. Welcome to Player vs. Player, the show where we debate the burning questions in the world of esports. I am your host, Jessica Chobot, and it's time to introduce my lovely guests. He's a former U.S. Army Infantry Sergeant and also a former manager of Cloud9 CSGO team. These days, he can be seen as a desk host and correspondent. Please welcome Trace Saranthus, a.k.a. Stunna. Hey, uh, you know, how's it going, Jessica? We're ready to do this thing, yeah? Awesome, good. I'm glad you're bringing your A-game. All right, moving on, she started out as a competitive Team Fortress 2 player and is now a host and correspondent for Overwatch tournaments, as well as having hosted Turner Broadcasting's E-League. Please welcome Rachel Querico. Hello. Thanks so much for having me. This is awesome. I know, this is really fun. It's I think we're going to cool. have a really good time. I hope so. All right, he's worked as an interviewer for Valve at the International, as well as numerous other events, including DAC and the Summit. He is currently with Beyond the Summit. Please welcome Ken Hotbid Chen. Hi. Hi, Ken. Always excited to debate E-Sports. I know you are. And finally, he's a retired Heroes of the Storm support player and is currently a commentator for HGC. Please welcome Wade Dreadnought Penfold. Hello, Wade. Hello. I love how fancily dressed you showed up today. <laughs> you know, dress to impress. I hope you're impressed. Yeah, that. heck yeah, man. Always dress for the job you want, right? All right, now the rules are simple. The panel will debate... I know, you're out of luck, dude. <laughs> <laughs> the rules are simple. The panel will debate a series of topics. I'll choose a winner after every question. Only two people will move on to the end and compete in our final round. So let's do this. Are you guys ready? Ready. All right. So our first question, from Rob the Robot to Donkey Kongas to the Wii Vitality Sensor, Nintendo has always marched to the beat of their own drummer. With the return of the Nintendo World Championships, the Big N is once again dipping their toe into the world of esports and competitive gaming. What do you make of Nintendo's unique take on esports? I love Splatoon, and mm -hmm. I kind of laughed at the idea of that as an esport until I got my hands on it on the Twitch stage. I got to play it a little bit, and yeah. it blew my mind how competitive, uh, how intricate the thought process was in that game. So I'd love to see high-level competition in that. Yeah. I completely agree, actually. Uh, Splatoon, I had the exact same thought process when looking at Splatoon. I was like, this is never going to be an eSport. Like, in the world of shooters, because how Nintendo constantly markets themselves to be this, everybody can come and play our game style, mm -hmm. it seems like it takes away from, like, the hardcore gamer. But they actually are doing a pretty good job of making games that cater to not only the new audience, but also the hardcores. Oh, wait, go ahead, Ken. You seem <laughs> well, like you're sorry, to, you disagree. Like, you see the approving look yeah. on your face. Nintendo's eSports are bad. They're not fun to watch. Like what? What makes them not fun to watch? I mean, I watched the platoon, and like, let me just say, it's not as, in my opinion, not as fun to watch as a lot of the other shooters. Well, here's a thought: it might not be fun for you, but what about for an up-and-coming audience, as in little kids? That maybe is an I'm not a little kid. I that... don't know. I don't know. I'm not a little kid. I just know, my, like, the esports audience in general uh, right now. There seems to be not a lot of people that age. I don't know how they are. They on Twitch? I'm like, I don't really know the stats. Well, Rachel, I'm giving that point to you. Well done. All right, next question. Capcom is hosting a bunch of special events for the Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite community. Now, players battle to win one of six Infinity Stones, which gives them special abilities in the upcoming tournament. Should other esports developers start mixing up the rules to keep them exciting, or is it more important to keep a level playing field considering how much money is at stake? Uh, this Infinity Stones thing is garbage. Like, yeah, why don't why don't you like it? Well, basically, seeding can exist in a tournament, right? That makes yeah. sense. But when you start giving players uh, attributes and abilities that uh, their com competition can't have access to, mm -hmm. that's not that's not competitive, right there. Do you even know what Infinity Stones are? They are the most important and powerful well, entities in the sounds, universe. Okay, it sounds like you read a, the lore. A performance enhancing gym is no joke. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to say I completely, I, and not maybe specifically when looking at these gems, like in, in the balance of them, I don't know the scene well enough to argue whether or not it's a balanced decision, but I will argue that I agree that any any advantage given to a player that isn't within the game, it's like that is in the game itself should never be done. 
Giving an advantage through a tournament format is going to be healthy and very competitive, but the minute that the game, the actual game, where the players are there clicking, acting, and making decisions, if at any point that they have an advantage in a playing field that was not through a decision they made, it's automatically an unhealthy competitive environment and that all publishers should look to avoid, avoid that at all costs. I would love to see more playful ways and more exciting ways for the winners to be determined over the course of fair competitive play. So I do like where the Infinity Stones uh, idea is going, yeah. but I do think fairness is essential. Fairness is core to esports, and, and that's something always to be considered. Do you want to hear my crazy tournament idea? I would idea? love to hear it. All right, so for PUBG, instead of actually playing PUBG, they have to parachute down into the arena, like in PUBG, and then they have to loot and assemble a PC before they can actually play. <laughs> that sounds incredible. In real life. Yeah, in real life. Absolutely. So like you'll have like a graphics card that like might work and might not. And then oh you'll have like a goodness. monitor that's like level one and level three. You can't, you can't see you. these because they're esports dollars. <laughs> gonna make them rain on you. That that's a good tournament I, format. Hey, you don't ESL, have to sell me on it. ESL, you can do it. You have my license. <laughs> Just mention me in the credits. Nice. All right, well, Wade, I am awarding you that point because you did such a good job. Uh, hitting all those marks and kind of uh, kickstarting this conversation. Well, that's it for this round, folks. Make sure and stick around because there is more player versus player coming up next. Welcome back to round two. This week's theme the image of esports. So let's get to it. All right, so in South Korea, top gamers are celebrities. You see their faces plastered on billboards. Groupies follow them wherever they go. How long will it take for esports in America to achieve the same, quote unquote, rock star level of mainstream popularity? I don't know if you've ever been walking around LA with any of our League of Legends or Heroes of the Storm casters, but uh, we're, we're well on our way to that rock star status, at least for a lot of the personalities in the scene. How long do you think that turns into more like, you know, moms and dads start to know who you are and things of that nature? I think it's less of a timeline and more of like the, the big break that esports is going to get where it merges into the mainstream. You know, when, mm -hmm. when Justin Bieber shows up at the League of Legends World Championships or, you know, Selena Gomez comes and buys an Overwatch League team, yeah. then maybe we'll see Which, a, which a isn't yeah. far out of the realms of reality, yeah, right? right? But she's exactly right in terms of like being out in public and seeing that interaction. We were just in uh, Orange County not long ago with the, the Cloud9 CSGO team. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were e eating ramen and the, the, the people on the table next to us like, hey, you know, take a picture, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's a real yeah. thing already, but to the grandeur that you're talking about, yeah, uh, I'd say we're a couple of years out still. Uh, five, but ten. I'm gonna go maybe three to five. Three because, to five. That's because, relatively soon. I mean, because I mean, if you look at the rate this whole thing's growing, right? The mm -hmm. money that's being thrown around, the, the sort of uh, eyeballs that we're getting on it across the world, there's no doubt it's gonna happen sooner rather than later. Gotcha. Do you guys agree, disagree? I think I'd agree. I might maybe slow the timeline a little bit from what they projected, but only for esports talent specifically. Um, mm -hmm. Just generally, they rely on essentially the league formatting and whatever game that they're playing to help better support them. And typically, they're the ones struggling at like kind of getting their name brand out there. Mm -hmm. So I feel like they'll be a little bit behind, but. Um, Gamers that are big in social media and like big presence on things like Twitch already are near that status within the U.S. And so I think that they'll make it within probably one to two, maybe three years. But the esports definitely before the next decade. Yeah. Um, I, I just want to say I think the whole like they're rock stars in Korea. That's a little overblown. Like they're very popular in Korea, but they're not like K-pop stars or you know. TV series stars. Yeah. They're, they're just bigger than they are in the U.S. They're, so, at they're at the top of their particular bubble. Yeah, yeah. So I think, you know, we're not that far off um, from that, not yeah. like the actual rock star. Um, you know, didn't Optic have a book that came out that was like New York Times bet top 10 bestseller recently? Um, so, you know, th they have an audience. Some of these players have like millions of Twitter followers. So they have, they're already there. It's just, you know, they're not going to be like LeBron or anything anytime yeah. soon. Yeah. You know? You know, I mean, these are all good points, so I think I'm just going to give everybody a point. Uh, Yay, everybody gets a point. So, uh, points for you, ooh, points for okay. you. All right, so moving on, there are a ton of games based on real-life sports, Madden, FIFA, NHL. Should esports based on real sports be a much bigger deal? I don't think that they should have any precedence over any other esport at all. I mean, have a, the better game, may the better game win, or the better funded game win, right? So mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's how it breaks down. I, I don't think it's on the community or anybody's responsibility, but I do think that there is an area kind of un 
covered in the esports area uh, world where it's just focusing on games that are a esport angle on a traditional sport. Uh, I would argue the closest thing we have to that right now that's doing pretty well is like the RLCS uh, with Rocket League. Mm -hmm. uh, and even though it isn't traditional soccer, it's like the closest thing to taking a traditional sport, putting a gaming twist on it, and then just, you know, putting it out there and saying, what what if we remove the judgment of like a, an umpire or something, or the human error to say that was a good, this was a bad, and put that into a gaming environment? We can make our sports better by making them digital and making them games. So I would like to see us try Jessica, and get just better give at the that. Point. Just do, give them the point. Do you guys know what very un good oh. debaters. <laughs> I gotta <laughs> tell you, I'm like, damn. I, I mean, do you guys know what Uncanny Valley is? Yes, very so much so. When you when you have a game that's too close to the real game, oh, yeah. you just watch the real game. It's like not, like in League of Legends, you're like, you're a fantasy character that can do all this crazy stuff that yeah. you can't see in real life. When you're playing NFL Madden, it is so close to the actual NFL, um, maybe without the actual like, concussions and stuff. But like, when you're actually in the NFL, you just watch that. Like, why would you watch this, you know? So it's too close. Why wouldn't you watch both, though? If, let's say, I mean, there's, there's people that are gamers that also like legit sports. Yeah. So why There'll wouldn't you just that, watch the two? Uh, There'll opinion. be people yeah, that appreciate no. both. Yeah. yeah. But like ultimately, uh, sports. I, I, like I'm saying, I don't think that there should be any special emphasis placed on putting sports, esports first, right? Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, yeah. even sure. other way, I think they should yeah. make a, a game where you play as an esports person playing those games. <laughs> so it's it's too it's hard. through a couple rabbit holes. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> It's like yeah. football manager, except you're trying to own your own team. <laughs> well, they Rachel, you wanna, yeah, I Rachel wanted to video. say something. Yeah, I think sports video games would really benefit from kind of the lens of esports being brought to, to their individual little pockets. Everyone in college played sports games. They played NHL. They played FIFA. And there are leagues out there where yeah. these players are competing. We just kind of haven't turned the public eye to them. And so I would love to see what putting that public eye on them, putting them on a stage, like we do with our other esports, would do to their community. Well, I mean, look at fantasy football, right? There's a great example. I mean, those are, that, I mean, it's based off of real plays and, and real players, but it's still a, a game that's going on in your office or yeah. wherever it is that you have that particular, and people have leagues and whatnot, so, but those people will still watch the game, I mean, granted, it's a little tighter tied to your results, but still, I mean, it's one step removed. Why not two steps removed? And, Instead, you're watching people play if some sort of an NHL game, yeah. If you build it and make it entertaining, people will come and watch. Yeah. By no means should we be throwing traditional sport like games up to be like, this is the next eSport. Mm -hmm. But I do think that maybe they haven't been promoted and supported effectively enough. Yeah, I actually think the NFL and those, those companies actually promote their games quite they a do. bit. Like mm -hmm. they have like they put up a lot of prize money. They don't actually get that many viewers. There's a mad but league. they still fund it quite mm -hmm. well. So I actually think there is some support. They might just have to it just might be that these kind of games just aren't that popular to do watch. Do you think ultimately. they're being suppressed at all by traditional sports? They're just not exciting. Yeah. There's nothing like Counter Strike yeah. out there to compare it to. There's nothing like League. There's nothing like Dota. But Madden is like I can just compare it to the NFL and I'd rather watch the NFL. It's I mean, like if it's like NBA Jam and they light on fire when they dunk, like yeah, I'll watch that. <laughs> but yeah. if it Let's looks like, almost exactly like an NBA game, yeah. like no, I get you know. what you're saying, Wade. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give you the point Thank because you. I think uh, that was really well said, and also because Stunna said to give it to you. So that's how that works. You're welcome, man. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we just can't I appreciate win. it. Good job. Good job, everybody. All right, that's it for round two. Stay tuned for the final question. More player versus player coming up next. Welcome back. The theme for today is the image of esports, so here we go. For years, people thought of gamers as antisocial slobs living in their parents' basements, but now millions of people play games every day. You've got Mila Kunis playing World of Warcraft, and Shaquille O'Neal owns a professional Overwatch team. So, are the old gamer stereotypes obsolete? Yeah, I mean, we, we've moved out of the basement now, we're in the garage, so it's not bad. <laughs> yeah, but the stereotype, I do think, like, it very much is prominent in the fact that like a lot of people do view it as like that they don't have the opportunity and though we can all sit here and be like, well, look at us, right? Like, like do we look like that not getting something done? Like, you know, that kind of failure know. to have mode. Okay, okay, uh, some of us. Friday, maybe. Uh, Which of us? But that, throw that, <laughs> that failure to be motivated and, and, you know, make something of it, I yeah. feel like it's very much not a true statement anymore. And like, even I, like when I was dating, like in a professional gamer and going like up to the girlfriend's parents and be like, I am a professional gamer. It's it, once they got past the idea of a job, they still were kind of just like you are not the person we assumed would be a professional gamer beyond ah. that point. And that I, though it maybe shouldn't exist culturally until it kind of you know 
grows out, it will always exist. Yeah. Knowing what you guys know about the pros and the cons of being involved in this industry, if a kid came up to you and said, this is something I want to do, would you say, yeah, that, that you should? Or would you be like, yeah, you know what, S you check out other avenues? I would try and talk them out of it. I think it's a lot less luck-based than auditioning for a movie. I yeah. think in Hollywood, there's a lot of people that are very skilled that are able to do these parts and it just happens to be circumstance, like just the right time at the right place and you're, you blow up big on some random movie. Doesn't happen in eSports, there are ladders, there are scouting. Mm -hmm. It's like, if you're good at a game and you're, you can make these organizations money, you can make these teams money, they're gonna find you. There is not a kid that's as good as Brax in, in CSGO that is just out there that no one knows about. Mm -hmm. He will be playing in FPL, he'll be, people will scout him out and they'll know and they'll add him to a team. The same thing in Dota. Is it like La La Land where the girl waits six years to try and land an audition or and she, and she just refuses to go home? Because I saw that and I was like, oh honey, it's been six years. Yeah. You should be giving up by now. Has Plus, anyone in esports watched La La Land? I've watched it. Uh, I, I, right. I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I yeah. wish Can I could. Can you feel this question? Can we miss oh, each other's God. hands? That's <laughs> the quality of people you're loving. That's going to make question. your cut. Damn it, Ken. It will. I'm looking right at the camera, yeah. <laughs> you, you shoot for the moon, you land among the stars. I don't know too many people in competitive gaming that started when I started that didn't start as players. Yeah. I wanted to be a player. I found out I couldn't be a player, but I loved what I was doing so much that I wanted to find another way to stay. So you adjusted. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, um... Ken and Rachel, I'm going to give you points because I think you actually made really good arguments for kind of opposite sides of the fence, both uh, pro and con, and just, you know, good realistic take to it. All right, so moving on to our next question. A lot of gamers foster communities based on respect and inclusiveness, but unfortunately there's still a ton of racism and online harassment. Does the perception of esports suffer due to association with toxic gaming culture as a whole? Yes, I think is the short way to put it. I, I just uh, the any time that there's a negative light shed on esports, I think like adds big of a problem um, as the toxicity may be. I think that it's very clear that it will kind of set us back. And I, I, but I feel like it's too complex of a problem to immediately be like, oh, you know, like we can solve this, which is why it still exists. Mm. That and the fact that people hide behind their keyboard, mice, controller, whatever. They really use it easy, sort of yeah. a proxy almost to, to try to say and get away with things mm -hmm. uh, that they would probably not normally say out and about at, at your local Burger King. <laughs> uh, nonetheless, I mean, toxicity exists all over the world, right? But it's just so much more prevalent seemingly. It's especially online. bad. Yeah. In but I video think esports is sort of an answer to the toxicity in gaming because esports provides the fairness structure, the rule structure, uh, the league structure to say, hey, if you're going to participate in our league, hey, if you're going to go after our prize money, here's the standard of rules that you have to abide by. You know, here's a code of conduct. And so that's a gift that esports can give the general gaming community. But there's a pretty big difference between like really aggressive competitiveness. Um, and just kind of general smack talking, and then what borders on like emotional abuse. Oh yeah, you know, I, I actively would encourage my players not to go on message boards or Reddit after a loss, or sometimes even after a win. I'd actually just say, you know, stay away from it completely. Because the stuff that gets said across the forums, across the Twitch chat, albeit to either women or competitors or whatever, it's, the, it's almost the same, really. Uh, it's really vile and pretty disgusting, dare I say. Mm -hmm. uh, but then you look at the big picture internet, right? It's not known to be the sanctuary of just everybody just be real nice to each other, rainbows and butterflies. No, it's the, the internet is overall a pretty crude place. I mean, it's really the an anonymity of it yeah. is what makes it really easy yeah. to be toxic. I think it's on whoever is in charge of the communication, whether it's mm -hmm. the publisher in the, in the game or whoever owns the forum to really police what people say. Or not like in the sense that you can't say what you want to say and you, you shouldn't have well, you different opinions. you can't be opinions, abusive. But you can't be abusive, yeah. Yeah. Awesome, well guys, those were all great answers. I'm going to go with, um, you know, Stana, I'm gonna give it to you. Cobb, we did it, we're on yeah. the board. Just wanna nope. give a shout out to all my sponsors. I'm kidding, <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Great. Well played, everybody. Unfortunately, only two will advance to the winner-take-all Thunderdome final round we call player versus player. This week's finalists are Rachel, and Wade! Woo! Hey. Good job, yeah. Wade! All right, stay tuned as Rachel and Wade go head to head in Street Fighter V.
Welcome back. This is our final round where our remaining two guests will be battling it out head to head in Street Fighter V. Wade, Rachel, who are you guys picking and why? Uh, I did a little research before this and I landed on Birdie, uh, who's okay. going to go with, and mainly because he just looks like he establishes dominance on his territory, and uh, that's what I'm looking to do. All right, all right, Rachel. That is fine by me. I'm going to go with Cammy here. Uh, I've always loved to play Cammy when I play Street Fighter. Got the same hair game going on. I feel uh, very draw some fast, strength. but very light strikes. Do you think that's going to be able to hold up against Birdie? Oh yeah, absolutely. My leg play is going to keep him on the ground. All right, all right. Well, are we ready? I mean, I'm down. Okay. Let's get started. Ew. Look at that chain. Birdie's ready to. I'm um, going. Yeah, belly. Oh. oh. Yep, yeah, there she goes. Yeah, but you're fast. Oh, that's my grab? Ooh. Dude, I've. Oh, good one. Oh, no. No, good no, no, no. Cammy. No. Nobody puts me. No! No! I just. I feel like I just. Unbelievable. What is the oh, V trigger? Oh, my God. Birdie, trigger you might be doing this. Oh, Birdie, you might be doing it. No, oh, no, no, no. 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 Don't Cammy's coming back! Don't Cammy's this. coming back! Don't! I, oh, wait! Cheating! Oh my gosh! Birdie did it! That was so <laughs> Kind of cheating a little bit! I didn't even follow that! It's cheating. best of three, right? You, it's best of three. We're going back in. We're going back in. Okay, alright. Oh, right. that was nice. 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 Oh, I don't really know it. how to do it. I found it. Heavy this. kick. Oh, oh my god, get out of here. No, you're stunned! No, no, no! 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 Oh, okay. Stop talking. Stop being nice to each other. Play. Oh, gosh. I'm so bad. Toxic. Oh, toxic dude. gamer. Yeah. Give me the toxic gamer. Yeah, give, give me the, the toxic, toxic gamer experience. Dread. You're terrible. Whoa, yeah. You're bad. No, no, it's working. Oh, I'm, I'm, head game. I'm, I'm just low kicks. That'd be great. Oh. Wait, 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 what? Oh. oh, I'm sagging. Are you kidding me? That looked all flashy, and then I end up... Did you legit just say that? <laughs> oh! <laughs> That's a hair oh. fisted. That is not even... Oh, oh my God. My God. I gotta tell you, what a comeback on that I, second round. You know that what? was fantastic. Thank you, Jessica. Absolutely. Thank you. And we have our winner, Wade. Congratulations. Excellent job. Thank you, sir. And thank, thank you. you, Rachel. Thank you did a good job having. as well. And thank you for those of you at home. Make sure and tune in next week when we have another episode of Player vs. Player. We will see you all then. Bye!